May 7, 2022, T-Mobile Arena, Las Vegas. Canelo Alvarez versus Dimitri Bibble. Surely Canelo was going to win and then maybe challenge himself and go up another weight class. Dimitri Bibble said, not quite yet. Putting on an absolutely fantastic performance to inflict the first defeat on Canelo since 2013. What a masterclass from Bibble. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the T-Mobile Arena here in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. Y feliz Cinco de Mayo. We are live on the zone pay-per-view for the featured bout of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing scheduled for the WBA Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing in association with Canelo Promotions, World of Boxing, and Class A e Talento. We are sponsored by Hennessy, Never Stop, Never Settle, Ben MGM, the King of Sportsbooks, AutoZone, MGM Rewards, Fallaway, and Jurassic World Dominion. See it only in theaters June 10th. This bout is sanctioned under the auspices of the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the chairman, Stephen J. Klubeck, the executive director, Jeff Mullen, and the World Boxing Association, the president, Gilberto Jesus Mendoza. Introducing your three judges scoring this world title contest from ringside. From Nevada, Tim Cheatham. Also from Nevada, Dave Moretti. And from New Jersey, Steve Weisfeld. And at the sound of the bell, your third man in the ring, from Nevada, referee Russell Mora. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the stage is set and we are here. This is it. The time has come. I said the time has come! From the four corners of the world to the four corners of this ring right here in Las Vegas, the fight starts now! Introducing first the defending world champion. He wears the black with burgundy trim. He scaled 174.6 pounds. His professional record, a perfect one. 19 fights, 19 victories, 11 of them coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he makes his eighth defense of his world title, fighting out of Indio, California. Here is the reigning, defending, undefeated WBA light heavyweight champion of the world, Dimitri Bebo. Bebo. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he is the challenger. He wears the pink with gold trim. He scaled at already 174.4 pounds. In 2005 in Guadalajara, Mexico, at the age of 15, he turned professional. Six years later, he won his first world title. His professional record now stands at 57 victories, one defeat, two draws, with 39 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he appears in his 22nd world title fight. He is the four division world champion, the three division unified world champion, the two division linear world champion, and the first and only undisputed super middleweight champion of the world. Here is boxing's biggest attraction, the pound for pound king, Peleando Fuera de la Tierra. Tequila y los mariachis, Guadalajara, Jalisco, México, orgullo del pueblo mexicano, Saúl Canelo Alvarez. Alvarez. Okay, Trump's here good. Trunks here are good. Anything below this 
belt line is a foul. We went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to remind you, protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands. God bless you both. Touch up. that throws shots and bunches. He has a large arsenal that he uses, but one of them being his punch count. So Canelo can't start off short and slow because he'll be back trailing. And he's going to throw that jab a lot. In his last fight, 76% of his punches were jabs. Talking to Bebo's team this week, they want to be unpredictable with the right hand. They felt Kovalev was more too predictable when he tried to throw that. They want to make Canelo thinking about that right hand for most of this fight. Canelo trying to come around the guard, the high guard of Bebo right now with left and right hooks. Tight guard being shown here by Canelo. Same tight guard that he had in front of Kovalev, like Manic said. So that jab will be effective even if it's just touching those gloves. Bivol's never been down. 11 KOs, 19 wins. Of course, Canelo has never been knocked down either. Left hand off the top of the head from Alvarez. There's that right hand stabbing jab downstairs. I want to see more body shots. finds a way around the guards. He had a little difficult time with Caleb Plant. He finally found a right hand, a home for the right hand to the gut, to the right side, to the left side of Plant's shoulder roll defense. Chris, is this going to see, is this going to be the way B-ball fights every single round tonight? You know, that's the sense I got from talking to his team. They want to create the distance between Canelo and keep throwing that jab because when they watch back the Kovalev fight, they know that Kovalev didn't hurt Canelo. But that fight was close on the scorecards at the time of the stoppage because of the sheer volume of punches, jabs specifically, that Kovalev was throwing. And look at him throwing more frequently here in round one. A good start for Bevel. Bevel has better fundamentals and foundation than Kovalev in a lot. He has smart feet, always aware of his positioning with his footwork. But he has to gain the respect of Canelo because Canelo is just walking past it down his guards. An uppercut at the bell for Canelo. He was usually the smaller man going up against the big guys. Absolutely. You know, he's one of Brownsville, Brooklyn, greatest heavyweight champion, the boxer's greatest heavyweight champion. So it's a pleasure to have him here. So we're off and running. Round two here between B-Ball and Canelo. As expected, B-Ball has showered jabs onto Alvarez. There's more of them. 
Canelo doing a good job blocking those, but they're always there, Sergio. Yeah, but he hasn't let go of that right hand yet. I want to see how Canelo's going to react with the strength of that right hand, whether it's to the chin or to the body, because Bebo does throw a nice piercing right hand to the body as well. So right at the end of the first round, at the start of the second round, Canelo trying to sneak that uppercut on the inside. Keep an eye on that moving forward. Here's a one-two from Beeble. There's an uppercut again that just misses. You can hear the crowd respond to that. Beeble seems as if he's just trying to find what works for him. He's tapping him, trying to find the range. Trying to see what punches he can land comfortably. But Canelo defense is extremely tight. It's really hard to get past that high guard. It really is. That's why you got to be content with just touching those gloves. Take what you can. And we saw Canelo Alvarez against Callum Smith constantly hit his arms. Do you think Alvarez might try to do the same to Bebo to stop the jab? Yeah, in that first round, I noticed Canelo was landing to the left shoulder of him. So maybe he wants to tire out those shoulders as well. Keep aiming at those biceps. Oh, that snuck through, caught the chin a little bit for Canelo. Whenever Canelo starts loading up, even if you block those shots, they're still going to have an impact. Beagle's going to find that out soon. This is what Bebo has to do. Even if he makes it a little bit ugly, pushing him, leaning on him, he has to be aggressive. And he has to make it uncomfortable for Canelo. And Danny, we talk about Canelo having such great power. Is this more power than Bebo's used to, considering he's the heavier fighter? I would say so. Canelo is definitely a, a, a jam packed type of power fighter. And so his punches has a lot of thump behind him, including speed. This might be a little bit different than what uh, Bebo's experienced before. Swing and a miss with the left hook by Canelo. Yeah. Well, Chris, he wanted to fight a light heavyweight, and Dimitri Bivo looks the part so far. Yeah, Dimitri Bivo looks sharp in these early rounds. He clearly has a good game plan, and he is throwing that right hand a little bit more than I expected him to early on. There's that right hand to the body. That, I, that's a sneaky power punch by Bivo that sets up the right hand upstairs. I want to see more punches like that for Canelo. Not, not many opponents throw body shots at Canelo. There's another uppercut trying to split the guard for Alvarez. But you can see when Bebo throws the one-twos like this, he is scoring. And these are bothering Canelo, Daniel. And you could excuse oh. me, Daniel. You can see the, the forehead of Canelo getting red in as well. So th those jabs and those punches, even though they're not a lot of power behind them. They're still having effect. That left goes around the guard of Bebo. He's keeping that hand up high because he has to. Well, the game plan is pretty obvious for Bebo, and so far it's been fairly successful. Jabs, straight right hands in bunches. And stepping back, not get, not giving Canelo a chance to break that range. Maintain that, that distance, stay behind the jab. Yes, yeah, Sergio, too, but he's stepping back with his hands up, which is a good thing. You know, as the last fight we've seen, the last fight, stepping back with his hands down, it wasn't a good. And how about Bebo coming back after Alvarez landed those right hands? And that's why Bebo's going to be such a hard fight, not only because of the jab and the footwork, but you're right. He pulls back with the hands up, so it's hard to pierce those gloves. Or get a flurry from Bebo. And it was a conversation, Chris, all week long. Can Bebo win a decision over Canelo Watch your and head. Vegas? Watch your head. I think he can if he throws punches like this. We 
We've seen Canelo in the early stages of a fight take his time and then start to figure out his opponent and wear him down. Sergio, do you think he can do that against this bigger man? I, I just, he, he's gonna have a, a harder time doing it with Bebo, because look, Bebo's not gonna stay against the ropes just like he did there. He's always gonna have the fight in the middle of the ring, and Bebo is not loading up on punches as well. We haven't seen a lot of fire. fighters come after Canelo the way that Bebo has. This is an excellent round for Dimitri Bebo. Stay off the ropes, you're doing a really good job in the middle of the ring. Canelo, like we're seeing. Nice uppercut lands right there, looking for an opening. This is what Canelo does well. When he, when he can't find something going on on the left side, he comes around the guard. Bebo coming back, not loading up on shots, keeping that range as well. So a good start for Dimitri Bebo as we begin round four. Canelo wanted to be challenged, Daniel. He wanted to face the best of the best. He's got a challenge tonight, doesn't he? Absolutely, but I'm wondering when we're gonna see the power of Bivol. As of now, we've seen defense, we've seen speed, we've seen movement, but we haven't seen that light heavyweight power that we know he has. Chris Mannix, how do you have it scored through three rounds? I've got it two rounds to one in favor of Dimitri Bivol. I think his combinations have been sharp. His jab has been active. Both these guys, are very good defensive fighters. Both are keeping their guards up, catching a lot of these punches, but Bevel, the volume has worked for him in the first three rounds. I like that nice right hand. Yeah, right hand to the body. You don't see, as you mentioned, a lot of fighters go to Canelo's body. Bevel is doing it here and going back upstairs as well. Bevel's not much of a body puncher, but it's that right hand right there that does enough work. And it sets up all the punches upstairs afterwards. Bebo doing a pretty good job defending the right hand of Canelo, although it has scored at times. And Bebo doing a great job backing up, not letting Canelo plant his feet, staying off the ropes, just like that. His back's touching the ropes, he's moving laterally. According to CompuBox, Bebo has thrown 40 more punches than Alvarez so far. Canelo's sitting down on those right hands. Canelo's been all power shots this round. A little bit. I think he is. I, I believe he is because he's not having no success backing up Bevo and trying to uh, uh, punch through the guard. So now he's trying to play possum a little bit and try to get Bevo to get overconfident. But not going to happen. I mean, that's not his game plan. That's not Bevo's strategy. Discipline is one of his strongest attributes. Yes, it is. Now Canelo starting to come forward a little bit. Each other at the end of every 
sientes, hijo? ¿Cómo te sientes? Bien. Órale, pues. No me desperdicies golpes, hijo. Esa es con dos, dos, tres nomás. Pum, pum, fuertes, aquí abajo. Mételo acabando en los hombros. Okay. No me abuses tanto de las... Here's that big right uppercut that landed by Canelo Alvarez, but was it enough to sway the judges? Evil did some good work in that round. Both men did, but it's those punches right, right there that leave a lasting impression on the judges. The uppercut has been the best weapon for Alvarez so far. <laughs> Absolutely, it's been one of his hardest shots. Leaving an impression too on Bivol. Well, I think through four full rounds, it's pretty apparent that this is not going to be a walk in the park for Canelo Alvarez, who's a five to one favorite, according to the odd makers here in Vegas. But we've seen this before with Canelo Alvarez, where he's biding his time, maybe even losing rounds or close rounds. We've seen it with Caleb Plant. We've seen it with BJ Saunders. And then in a flash, he turns it on. Coming forward, start of the fifth, it's Canelo. There's a right hand again, the uppercut just misses. Bivol not throwing back as much this round. Yeah, Canelo is making a point to win this round and back up Bivol, make him feel his power. Those are big right hooks, overhand rights being landed by Canelo. Oh, look at Bivol. Look at him go. Oh, my word, Bivol. And Canelo wants more of it. The crowd wants more of it, too. Is that frustration from Canelo? No, I just think that's discipline by Bivol. I mean, he landed his shots, got the crowd going, landed his points, then he went back on control. That's what he does so well. He stays in control. No emotion from Bivol. He's a boxing robot in there. And that's what you need when you're fighting Canelo. You need that discipline. You don't fight with emotion, you fight with intelligence. That's what Dimitri Bivol is so great at. What do you make of his demeanor so far, Daniel? Bivol's demeanor to me seems as if he's just trying to weather the storm right now because Canelo is putting on an onslaught. And so maybe he's trying to just patiently wait, maybe let Canelo die down a few. But ultimately, his movement is still apparent. And so as long as he can stay moving like this, he can stay in this fight. Another good jab, and then a left from Bivol, who started out slow in this round, but finished strong.
Canelo claimed to want more of it as he tried to wave Bebo back in, but Bebo not having it. And the reason Canelo couldn't counter uh, that onslaught and that combination is because Bebo wasn't loading up. He was just turning his waist and shoulders. Finishing off with a straight right hand as Bebo and again he connects. Very impressive stuff by Bebo. Canelo trying to land the right hand again. Let's see if he goes back to the uppercut that was successful early on in this fight. There is one. Anytime Beagle's back hits the ropes, he gets right in the center of the ring. That's ring generalship, and that's the reason Canelo's having a hard time pinning down Dimitri Bivol. I think Canelo's going to have to be content with hitting shoulders, arms, and forearms in this fight because Bivol, his defense is too tight, the footwork's too good. Chris, is this the type of fight you thought we'd see in the sixth round? Well, I expected this much activity from Dimitri Bivol with the jab. I didn't expect this many combinations and really the comfort level. We spoke a lot before this fight, but would the lights in the moment be too big for Dimitri Bivol at this point? Absolutely not. He seems unaffected by everything as we check in with Sean Porter. Listen, Dimitri Bivol supporters hang on. I do have him losing this fight, two rounds to three, but what I'm seeing from him, I'm gonna mimic what Sergio Mora said, control, discipline, intelligence, hang on because this fight might get tight the way that B-Ball is, is uh, performing right now. It's already tight, I would say. Here in round six, 50 seconds to go. It could be 3-2 either way. Content to lay against the ropes, hoping he can counter Bebo. Bebo looking right at the chest of Canelo. You asked earlier, Todd, if you look at a person's eyes or chest, Bebo's looking straight at the chest. And he's looking to set this right hand up. Came around the guard with a left hook right there. I love the punch selection by Bebo right now. Just like Canelo, he's looking for an opening and land something big as well. Total focus. Bebo throwing that jab to the chest, jab to the chin, but look at the intelligent punching right there, not falling off balance. Threw a shot, stepped back, Canelo didn't throw anything, attacked again. That is why Canelo's having a hard time breaking that distance with the footwork. Do you see any fatigue right now on, on Canelo? I don't see much fatigue. I see Canelo coming forward, but I do start to see Canelo's face starting to take some shots and starting to swell up a little bit and start to see a little bit of red here and there from Bivol staying as sharp as he is. I see the same thing, and I might even throw a little frustration on Canelo's part. If you look both at their faces, Bivol's the one that looks calm and collected with a poker face. Canelo's showing a little, a little bit of frustration. We know Canelo can turn things around in a snap. The fight against Sergey Kovalev, as we talked about earlier, was very close until Canelo changed everything in a hurry, getting the knockout victory. Now, this fight is resembling more of the Kayla Plant fight, I believe, because Plant, you know, he was having his moments and a lot of close rounds as well. Let's take a look at our CompuBox numbers as Bebo throws a few jabs. Punches landed in the last round. Bebo 13 compared to six for Alvarez. There you go, see? 
aiming at the, at the arm, the left arm of Bebo now. It's ready. That's exactly the game plan that Canelo had against Callum Smith. Do you think this strategy would work against Canelo? Bebo Scooby trying to break him down, his arms, all these different things. Do you think that'll work? I, I, you know what? We're going to find out, Daniel, because right now he has to be satisfied hitting something. True. that right hook to the body right there. Instead of punching straight at the arm, just dig down to the left side of the body of Beeble. Let's check in with Chris Mannix, who's in the corner of Beeble. Joel, how do you think Dimitri's doing out there? He's doing great. To me, he's winning the fight. Canelo's not landing anything clean. The, the, the cleanest shots, Dimitri's been landing them. Canelo tries to throw, but he's blocked. Uh, Dimitri's been landing most of the shots. And he's a busier guy. Is this, was this part of the game plan, the entire game plan coming in? Exactly. See, he's blocking every punch. Look, he's been under like four punches in a row. Thanks, Joel. I think Joel was trying to yell so the judges could hear. Look, he's hitting it four times in a row. See, Kyle's doing nothing. No, man, I, I agree with Joel. This could be 3-3-4-2, three, three, but Bebo, Bebo looks like he's following the game plan a little bit better than Canelo. That's what I'm talking about with the frustration. One thing I've noticed, too, is how Bebo is able to take the shots of Canelo. Even the arm shots, even the close shot, the, the shots at graze him. He's able to almost seem as if he's not bobbing. And that's because he's been in with big, destructive punchers like Joe Smith and others. Bruising and redness on the face of Canelo Alvarez. Bebo looks much better, at least physically right now. Canelo smiles back to the corner. Went back to the ropes. He wants to bait. Be 
Beagle to make a mistake. Beagle's not giving him that mistake. All the while, Beagle is scoring with these counters. So Canelo needs to come forward and do what he's been doing the first half of this fight. It's the biggest, biggest moment of Dimitri Bebo's career, and he has risen to the occasion thus far. I feel like because he's down right talking, now that he's do fighting that. in these don't spurts, he shouldn't do it. He should continuously, even if it's not hard shots, just let your hands go a little bit more. Canelo looks frustrated and he looks a little winded to me. Take it easy. How do you feel? Good. We have four rounds left. You do what you need to do. You need to be intelligent. You know, don't take so many shots. Take a deep breath. Twelve minutes, that's all it is. I want you to come out fighting, okay? Don't leave your hands down. Get your hands, get your high, get your high guard up there. Canelo, you can see jogging around the ring, trying to get some life perhaps back in his legs. Some concern from Eddie Reynoso. There has been concern in that corner the last three rounds. And there's a little concern in the eyes of Canelo as well, jumping off that stool, trying to liven his legs up. Well, this is a better start for sure. Has Canelo finally met his match? The live odds, believe it or not, still have Canelo as the favorite. The bookmakers think Canelo's going to turn the heat up here over the last few rounds. And history proves that it's hard to win a decision against Canelo in Vegas. Golovkin came up short twice. A lot of people felt Caleb Plant was having success. The judges disagree. Even Floyd Mayweather, he fought him. One judge had it a draw. Exactly. Let's check in with Chris Mannix. You know, Todd, one thing about Canelo, having watched and scored a lot of his fights lately, he's often a very easy fighter to score for. His punches are often clean, but Dimitri Bivol's defense has been excellent. He is overwhelming Canelo with the sheer volume of his punches. This is just an incredibly difficult fight Canelo's in. He hasn't figured out a way to get to Dimitri Bivol. But Bivol has found a way to get to Canelo. And the reason he's finding a way is because it's it's his footwork. He doesn't smother himself coming in. And then when Canelo wants to attack, he bounces back, steps back, still punching. Now it's starting to look to me that Canelo fit off just a little bit more than he can chew. This is the second foray into light heavyweight division for Canelo. He knocked out Kovalev, and he may have to do the same to Bivol if things continue. Bivol like is a natural light heavyweight, so guarding Putting his earmuff defense in is good enough for him because he's that strong. The crowd roaring their approval for Alvarez. At this point, Canelo's not going to pierce that guard. Bebo is already accustomed to that power. You can hear Dimitri Bivol's corner screaming at him. 30 seconds. Oh, they want to assure this victory. Well, this is a much better round for Canelo. And that's why they're screaming at Bivol to work. Nothing's really landed, but Canelo's definitely punching more and punching at the guard of Bivol, which is what he's going to have to do to win these rounds.
Тогда он начинает пятиться от тебя. Ты не иди к нему глухой защите. Иди, веди рукой, понял? Веди рукой. Канада подвел его, остановил его. И вот здесь начинай подергивать на ножках. Никто не стоит ему на повторе, первая легкая, да-да, разорвал их, да-да-да, воткнуть туда. success and then goes back to that power jab he gets his work set working pulls out with his footwork pops him with that jab we asked people during the fighter meetings do you think you can win a decision in las vegas he said you know what if i feel like i won that'll be good enough for me i don't worry about the judges not sure he would feel that way right now but we shall see and look at the punches through round nine my word 110 to 61 Chris, are you surprised by what you're seeing? I'm very surprised. Dimitri Bebel, start to finish, has had a really effective game plan. And Canelo Alvarez, one of the smarter fighters in all of boxing, who often has a plan B, a plan C, when coming into fights, has not figured out how to get to Dimitri Bebel. And Dimitri Bebel, frankly, looks like the fresher fighter as we're halfway through the 10th round. Well, Canelo told us how much respect he had for Bebel, told us how good he thought Bebel is. And Canelo was right. And Todd, this looks in many ways like the first Golovkin fight, where Canelo's fighting off the ropes, off his back foot a lot. He managed to come away with a disputed draw in that fight, but Bebel, he looks like he's winning it. Counter right hand snaps the jaw. Doesn't look like he's winning it. He's winning this fight. Daniel, what should Canelo be doing differently? I feel like Canelo should be taking it a little bit more seriously. It's good to slip punches. It's good to look good defensively, but when you're down, and I feel like he knows it's a large possibility he may be down, he got to do something better. He got to step it up. I think this is a fight where Canelo's heavy feet, I mean, it's, it benefits him to keep his feet planted because he's so explosive. But when you're dealing with a technician with good footwork like Bebel, you're going to have to step up your, 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 your footwork. Well, Canelo is chasing greatness by being in this division, and he's going to have to be great the rest of the way to win this. here from Canelo. We see his arms up in the corner between rounds. That usually shows that the, that the fighter is fatigued. I don't know if it's the vegan diet. I don't know if it's the pressure that Bebo is putting on and him come up, obviously coming up in weight class. But Bebo looks very unbothered. He's even getting closer to Canelo here, letting himself be in Canelo's range, maybe because he's seeing less of kind of power from Canelo. A right hand scores for Bebo. Let's check in with Chris Mannix's scorecard. Yeah, I've got Dimitri Bebel in complete control despite at the moment 97-93 on my scorecard. Canelo Alvarez will either need a couple of knockdowns or a knockout to win this fight. Mannix 
How does the judges panel look here tonight? Are you confident they'll get it right? I'll say this. It's one of the best judging panels you can ask for. Tim Cheatham, Dave Moretti, Steve Weisskopf, who I consider the gold standard when it comes to boxing judges. These are the best, some of the best of the best in all of boxing. Only one man has beaten Canelo Alvarez. That's a great Floyd Mayweather Jr. fight. He did it by fighting Canelo on his terms. That's what Bevo is doing right now. He fights someone he wants, but he boxes more often. Stepping back and always staying in control, not giving up control. Whoa. Yeah, he's frustrated. With acts like this, Canelo is definitely frustrated. He's been frustrated. Said it takes brute strength to beat a brute puncher, but it takes finesse and a game plan and technique and a strategy and discipline, which is what Bevo has been doing this entire fight. Can you imagine if Bevo can knock out Alvarez? It appears he might be going for it. He's going for it, but I don't think he's landing anything big. He's just pushing back and bullying the bully. seen Canelo with this type of body language. Bevo is doing what he always does. He fights within himself. He doesn't get out of character. There's a right hand that splits the guard for Canelo. So here's Bebo chasing down Canelo who got underneath and went on a little bit of a ride. That could have been really bad. So Daniel, if you're Dimitri Bebo here in the 12th round, how do you approach it? You close the show. You are a champion, faking another champion, but a lot of that coming up. You clearly dominated the whole fight. You need to close the show in dramatic fashion. Dan Bevo, write his name in the books. Daniel, I think he's in control right now. He should just stay behind that beautiful jab, not take any more chances. He did exactly what he needed to do to be in this position in this last and final round. But if history repeats itself, he must know it's better to close the show than to have some foolery done at the end of the fight. And that's the way we're seeing the fight, but who knows what the judges are seeing. I think it's safe to say, though, that Canelo has to win the 12th round. Bruising body attack here from Canelo. But it's being blocked. Bevo is accustomed to that power, and he's strong. He's a natural light heavyweight. Those punches are not having any effect on Bevo. Very true. Was Bebo just too big and just too strong for Canelo Alvarez, who's trying to unify another division? Too big, too strong, and most importantly, too smart. Yes, yeah, Sergio, when it gets to a point where Bebo's hitting him, just that will, and he's a bigger guy. It's almost very nerve-wracking for Canelo. Last round, but, you know, I thought Canelo could have but one of those shots could have went down. Very strong chip from Canelo. Canelo has fought 18 different world champions. Only Floyd Mayweather has beaten him. And Bebo has only faced two world champions. And he's in a position to beat the champion of the world. Right hand for Canelo. 
Jabs from Beeble. Canelo is known to take on big challenges, fighting the best. He might have bit off too much that he could chew here tonight. I've never seen Canelo this fatigued in a fight before. Uppercut blocked this time. Did we underestimate Dimitri Bivo? Canelo Alvarez was a big favorite in the biggest fight of the year, but Bivo showed up and showed out and may have just beaten the pound for pound king. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action here in Las Vegas, we go to the judges' scorecards. Tim Cheatham. Dave Moretti and Steve Weisfeld all scored this bout identically. 115 to 113 for your winner by unanimous decision. He's still undefeated and still the WWE Heavyweight Champion of the World, Dimitri He has done it. Not to the game plan. He used his best attributes, which was his speed, his power, his movements, and his discipline, most and foremost. I feel like he did so well tonight that he surpassed so many people's expectations. He should be proud of his performance, and also Canelo should be proud of himself as well. Both, both job, great guys. Dimitri Bivol kept it with quiet confidence this entire time. He's told you that he doesn't need a knockout to win. He hasn't knocked out his last six opponents. He didn't knock out Canelo tonight, but he got the biggest win of his career by playing power chess, being strategic, being disciplined, and following all the way to the finish line.